I think the last time we did an interview would have been September last year. Yeah. And now we're almost in August, pretty much a year ago. How has the way that you frame the band in your mind and the role that it plays in your life changed in that time? Hmm. Yeah, I suppose I, I wouldn't have say I wouldn't say it changed that much. Um, I reckon maybe I'm like a slightly uh, less obsessed and annoying about it, if that makes sense. Not in a bad way, but like not like a demotivation way. But uh, I think when we were just getting started, it was uh, probably pretty irritating to be in a band with, like, especially over lockdown. The, the boys have got no motivation, and I'm like sending them like a song every day and asking them to do stuff. And, uh, so I think I've maybe st- stopped being so pernickety and stuff. Do you feel, because remember we spoke as well about how lockdown was such a creative time for uh-huh. you, did it kind of hit you at the right time? Do you think it was quite a good thing that it hit you when you were at that obsessed moment? Yeah, like the first one certainly, um, I just think, yeah, motivation does just come in spurts and obviously that having that period where I didn't have to do anything else apart from uh, write tunes was, was definitely a good part and then the, the second one was what a lot of other people suggested their one was like, you know. Um, a lot less motivation than the first one but yeah the first one certainly came at a good time it was quite helpful in a way so of these two songs that have come out this year did they come from the first lockdown um well the the coma induced gibberish one was like i'd written the verses in the first lockdown and then we went in and sort of reworked it with johnny and um, adam and then the selexa one yeah that was uh that was written really, that was written over a year ago now, but it just took us a while to sort of flesh it together as a band. Um, but yeah, like the, the main body of that song was written in the first lockdown. When you say flesh it together, is that just kind of building it out? What did it start with? How does that process uh, kind of look yeah, like? Yeah, so like the writing process started with a riff and then like I wrote the lyrics and that was done really quickly. But and then after that, it was just like, once we'd come back to, to rehearsing again, you don't have a gig to, to sort of practice for. It's um, sort of a weird, dynamic try to get all these new songs together and but that one just seemed to take a little longer than than the rest of them and um, i'm not sure why to be honest when you're writing so many songs over quite a condensed period like you were in lockdown do they all feel quite different or is there a tendency that some of them start to blur together and touch upon similar topics or do you find it easy to have everyone be quite distinct yeah um i think like if you took yeah if you're writing because at that sort of time i was i was writing probably like Writing and like doing a demo of a song, maybe like four songs a week or something like that, which is like quite a lot when you do it over three months or something. And obviously, quite a lot of them turn out to be quite shite. So, if I think if like they all turned out to be recorded, like recording worthy, then they would maybe sound quite similar. But because like the majority of them get scrapped, looking back on it, they don't seem too similar. Because one, I don't know, like Selexa comes out and that might have been written two months before the, like the coma inducing gibberish initial lyrics so they don't really blur together that much but. Do you think Selex is your first love song that you've written? Uh, <laughs> uh, well apart from when I was 15 and 16 and try to write uh, try to write music for the first time but yeah it was the first first kind of lyrics that uh, seemed to be about a love a love interest anyway uh, it's the closest thing we'll get probably A love song to an antidepressant Yeah a love song to an antidepressant <laughs> It's interesting because with love songs there is a tendency where it's very easy you know, to slip into cliches mm. and they can all kind of fit into a similar template. What does a love song have to do for you for it to be interesting and for you to approach it? Yeah, um, it's like you said, it's like the cliche element. Um, I, I think I probably brought, brought them up in our last uh, interview as well, but like, I think like the way Declan Welsh writes lyrics, he sort of brings up something that is probably a cliched feeling that everyone feels, but sort of does it in a different way. And I suppose it's kind of hard to articulate without actually looking through lyrics and, and sort of explaining why one's cheesier or the other. But I think if Selexa was actually about a, a woman called Selexa, then it would be pretty cheesy. But uh, we've kind of got out of that because it's not about a, a woman. <laughs> you worked with, it was Chris McCrory you uh-huh. went in and produced that one with, right? Yeah. And Marshall, Chris Marshall, he mixed it. Yeah. What's something that you learned from Marshall that you took into that process with Chris McCrory? And what's something you learned from Chris McCrory that you think you'll take in in future? Yeah, <laughs> it's just funny, man, because we're just so unprofessional when we're in there. But um, I liked it. I think, like, uh, when you go in with Johnny and Marshall, when it's just them two, it's, it's more of like a formulaic process where uh, you're trying to hit these melodic hooks and uh, you try to write, like, a single, like a... Like, you know, like, not, not a pop song, but you try to hit these big choruses and stuff, whereas the, the McGrory session was a bit more, he sort of let us do the leg work and then he'd, he'd come in with little little parts. Um, so, yeah, I, fe- like, I feel a bit more confident in sort of just being ourselves after the McGrory session and uh, 
we're winning with marginal again this month, but uh, we're just going to sort of, you know, be a bit more forceful. If, if, if there's two songs we really want to do, we're going to do them rather than um, sort of write one on the day. Um, Marshall, Marshall's taught us loads of stuff, man. I didn't even know what like a bar was when I was recording, uh, so I don't know. The list is too long about what Marshall's taught us. <laughs> uh, we'd be uh, we'd be pretty lost without him, I think. It's interesting that he mixed the last one as well. How does that change your perception on what you've done in the studio once a mix has been done of it? Yeah, not too much. Like it's a strange one because sort of like when we went in with Johnny and Marshall the last time, we didn't really have. We didn't have. We had about like seven or eight songs we could have done, but we weren't super confident with any of them. Whereas this time when we went in with McGrory, we were really confident about these sort of three songs that we'd done, and like we were up for hearing ideas, but we were pretty. We didn't want them to be chopped and changed too much. Um, so the mix didn't seem that different. It was just like typical, really slick Marshall. Like he just sort of brings out what you want, and you don't even have to tell him. Like you'll sort of have a little idea in your head, and you don't even have to message him because he'll just do it. Uh, sort of off his own instinct, but yeah, the mix, the mix just it just made us sound better, really. <laughs> that was pretty done. That's his job, I suppose. You said as well that after the last session, you felt more confident in being yourselves, kind of going forward. Why exactly do you think that happened? What exactly was feeling that? Yeah, I think like just in in this kind of Glasgow scene, as people refer to it, um, there's obviously a lot of uh, bands who are already successful or bands who are sort of. Um, on the route to being successful, and uh, it can be quite tempting to maybe uh, try and try and copy a little bit. Like I know, I was talking to Louis from Stony Max, and he was saying that when they first started releasing stuff, they were sort of trying to fit into that punk image because that was the the thing in Glasgow at the time. But I don't know, the scene's just become so diverse now that I think it's just good to sort of be confident in what you're doing yourself, and obviously take ideas on board. But yeah, the the recent songs we've done where we sort of had the majority of the say and how they sound uh, are like my favourite ones so far so I think it's just sort of having that process the song turning out well makes you more comfortable to do that in the future yeah at what stage you know from taking a song from demo to mix to master at what point in that process do you take the most enjoyment from it oh uh, they're, they're all so good like I love the initial writing process but then it's funny because some songs that turn out to be pretty good in the end, the initial writing process doesn't really cover them in glory. Um, and then I, I think I'd have to say getting the, getting the mix back though. Like when Marshall's done a mix of a song that you've been working on for a month, uh, it's a good feeling because it just sound, always sounds huge when he, when he sends it back over. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>